Okay, this is a audio test for our service this morning. I just wanted to do a quick dry run test to make sure that the audio was coming through and it wasn't um, snap, crackle, and popping. Um, so if you happen to jump on because you just got an alert, River of Life is live. Well, we're not really, well, we are live, but it's not our service yet. This is kind of like the band up there tuning their instruments. Anyway, um, I thought what I'd do in order to test our audio um, is to just read through the note that I made in the River of Life Facebook group last night. Perhaps you can um, go to that. That's a private Facebook group, River of Life Church, and you can find the information there for um, our worship time. Mel Mealy has created another set list for us on Spotify, and uh, all the instructions as to what we're going to do are listed there. And also, in the description below on this YouTube um, video, you have all the information on the Spotify list and the way that we're going to go about this. So at 10 o'clock, we're going to start. We're going to have some prayer and announcements and greetings and, uh, and scripture. And then from there, we're going to go off into our own spaces and worship using the set list that Mel has provided for us. She's also provided a, a wonderful prayer to go between the first and second uh, songs and following songs that uh, we can work through just to get ourselves into a place of worship and a place of slowing down. Our minds are all racing a thousand miles an hour and uh, we want to take an opportunity to just slow ourselves and worship so that we can be open and ready to hear a word from the Lord. Good morning, River of Life. Welcome to our online church experience with audio. Let's hope. I'm, the test went well, so I'm hoping that it's still, it's still going okay. Um, yeah, just welcome. It's Palm Sunday, and uh, who would have thunk that we'd be doing our Palm Sunday celebration like this? But, uh, but here we are, and uh, you know, God moves and God works, and we, uh, we roll with it. So um, I'm just glad that you're here today, and I'm thankful that we live in a time where um, we can still gather virtually, if not um, in person. Um, yeah, what, if you have, um, if you want to look in the description on this, uh, the YouTube Live, if you're, you know, you have to be out of full screen to see it, but if you take a look, um, you can see a full rundown as to what we're going to do for our worship time today. Um, Mel has created a set list for us on Spotify, which is a wonderful um, uh, mode of, of doing that um, because there are lyrics that are provided if you use the app, the Spotify app on your device. Uh, if you're just using a website version of Spotify, you won't get the lyrics, I don't think, but you'll get the music. So that's that's great, too. Um, but she's offered that set list to us to worship together with that. But we're not, we, because of copyright, we can't just dump music into YouTube. So we, we have to do this in our own spaces. Um, Mel's also uh, given us this wonderful prayer to go between the first song. The first song is let us get into the place of worship. And then there's the prayer to work. It's kind of a reflective meditational kind of thing that we can work together you can work as a home um, and have a leader through that, or you can just work individually. It's up to you. Uh, and then just finish out that set. That will take about half an hour. And so what's going to happen is we're going to come back here at around uh, 10, 30, 25, 2, right around there. Lise and I are going to go through that set list as well. So it will all be, uh, we'll all be rel relatively in sync. Um, and so the logo is just going to show on our live channel while we go off into our own spaces to do that. Um, so uh, take note of that, and uh, if you if you can't find it in the description in this YouTube channel, um, go to the private Facebook members group uh, for River of Life, and I posted there last night with all the links and description uh, that you would need. Um, all right, well let's um, let's pray together. And then we're gonna uh, we're gonna I'm gonna push a, a scripture reading out um, to you, and then it's just gonna be logo. And when that logo comes up again, that's your cue to go and hit that Spotify list and uh, enter into a time of worship, um, either in your own space by yourself if you're alone, or um, with the people you're with. Uh, let's pray together. 
God, we thank you for this day. We thank you for this day in history when Jesus and his disciples came down from Galilee and entered into the holy city. We thank you, God, um, for the, the message that that brings to us, that, uh, that God, Jesus, is king. And we pray, God, that you would help us today in all the uncertainty that we have and with all the fears and all the imaginary things popping around in our heads that cause us distress. We pray, God, that you would help us to remember on this Palm Sunday, um, even though we're not waving physical palm branches, God, I pray that you would um, settle our hearts into a place where we truly believe that you are in control of things. You're in control of our lives and we are safe in you because Jesus is King. I pray for each person who is watching this now live and then in the future, Lord, as it uh, stays in our channel, I just pray your blessing on the people who watch this and celebrate you in the midst of this time. And we pray, God, that you would uh, be merciful to us as we worship you and as we find our way. And we pray, God, that you would help us as well to be merciful to one another. For we know that is your will for us in Christ Jesus. Help us to love, O oh God. Uh, now, as we go forward into worship, Lord, we pray that you would settle our hearts down and that you would give us uh, that peace that uh, passes all understanding so that we can enter into a, a place in your presence where we can worship you. In Christ's name we pray. Amen. Have mercy on me, Lord, for I am in distress. Tears blur my eyes. My body and soul are withering away. I am dying from grief. My years are shortened by sadness. But I am trusting you, O Lord, saying, You are my God. My future is in your hands. Let your favor shine on your servant. In your unfailing love, rescue me. Psalm 31 All right, welcome back, and a uh, big shout out to Mel on her birthday to uh, thank her for preparing that worship set for us. It was absolutely fantastic. Um, yeah, and if we're going to do any of that in the future, it probably if you have a device, a phone or an iPad um, that you can install the app on, that would be probably a great way to experience that. I was... Um, I had posted in our Facebook group uh, last night, and uh, and my daughter Rebecca uh, texted me um, and just let me see a link to Steve Bell, who has in this time of uh, crisis um, released all of his music um, for free for streaming in churches and singing along. So he's released all of the copyright on his music. So. Uh, we love Steve Bell, um, and there's a personal connection in our church to his uh, his his parents. So I mean, we uh, we always appreciated him. And um, anyway, so yeah, I want to integrate a little bit of that into next week, having some of Steve Bell stuff in our service, and uh, uh, I'm looking forward to that. And I think that he's looking for other artists, um, indie kind of artists, to also do this and join in, so that we can uh, we can have some good music uh, integrated into our online services as we all try to figure this out. Um, that prayer, thank you, Mel, for that prayer. That was a, it was a wonderful prayer. And as I was going through that, I, I couldn't help but um, think back about things that, uh, you know, fear. And it's interesting how when you start reflecting on fear, all of a sudden you start to feel it again. And you, we push those things out of our, out of our space, out of our mental space. And I think the more we do it, the better we get at it so that we're still actually experiencing all the stress from the fear, but we're consciously just sort of setting it aside. And, um, and then when you take a moment to just think about it, all of a sudden it just sort of rushes upon you and have an opportunity to, to give that over to God and to trust that his love is greater than anything we're afraid of. That was a, a powerful moment. And then of course, um, think about the week and, and the Holy spirit and just to get news, um, getting choked up here um, from Chris uh, just about an answered prayer 
just blessed me. So anyway, um, in the midst of all the chaos and all the tragedy and all the hurt, um, God still just sort of does stuff and um, breaks through. And we just need to have eyes that see it and ears that hear um, what he's saying. Um, I, I want to, um, I'm assuming that, uh, you know, I don't I, I don't have the stream in, in front of me, but um, uh, I'm assuming that um, most of you are back now from, the, from our worship time. And I, I just want to give a special thanks to those who have uh, braved the internet um, and have gone on to Canada Helps and have given so generously uh, to River of Life in this last uh, week. Um, I know it's hard to find new ways of doing things, and uh, it's really rough um, for us as a church because we don't have that connection that we like to have. Um, and the only way to really help us out financially is through Canada Helps. I mean, granted, you could drive in and drop a check off to one of our leaders in a plastic bag or something like that, but who wants to do that, right? So I just want to say a thank you very much to those who have uh, given on Canada Helps for the first time. And, uh, and obviously, we're thankful for those who are uh, habitual givers um, to our church and those who, who support us and what God is doing at River of Life. We want to thank you very much for your support. Um, earlier, um, yesterday, uh, I had an opportunity once again to go into uh, the journey and uh, stand in front of their 4K camera and uh, actually have decent video and audio taken for our message. Um, it was as I was preaching this message that I had prepared and I just sort of started riffing here and there about things because it just sort of dawned on me as I was speaking this how, how, how incredibly sad it is that we're not able to be together today. Easter, for our family, has always been the most important day. And as we enter into Holy Week, it's always been a blessing. Um, because if I was living in Jesus' day, and I was one of his disciples, and I was going to be running behind him, shouting, you're the people I'd be with. And to not be with you is hard. So, anyway, I miss you all. Thank you for joining this way. And I better cut the video before I lose it. Okay, too late. Anyway, video. We are continuing in our chapter, Who is God? in our Faith in Real Life series. Throughout this series, or this chapter, I should say, we've been focusing in on John 14, 9, where Jesus says to his disciple Philip, who had just asked him uh, to show us the Father. Philip figured that would be awesome, and um, no doubt it would be. But Jesus responds to Philip in a somewhat surprising way, and he says, Have I been with you all this time, Philip, and yet you still don't know who I am? Anyone who has seen me has seen the Father. And that phrase, anyone who has seen me has seen the Father, has been echoing and reverberating through this chapter of our series, Who is God? And once again, today we are looking to Jesus to see the Father. And I realize that sometimes as we look at these titles, they can be a little off-putting. Sometimes, you know, maybe simplistic. Uh, and theologically speaking, I don't completely disagree. But that's kind of the point. It's, they're done to create a sense of disequilibrium to put us off balance a little bit as we think about what does it mean to see God, to see the Father through Jesus? What does it mean in our understanding of who God is to force ourselves to see God through Jesus Christ? And that's what we're going to do today. We're going to take that uniquely Christian idea that we see God best and most fully explained in Jesus Christ. 
A lot has changed um, since last year at this time when we celebrated Palm Sunday. Now in the midst of a, a COVID-19 global pandemic, it seems every day we're heading to the news to get updates on what the prognosis is for our nation and for our world. And today, uh, obviously, as we meet virtually, uh, we don't get that rush of waving palm branches or singing energetic songs together and, and just getting into that celebration of King Jesus. But what we can do is we can look to Jesus and see God. And that's what we're going to do today with our message, God on a Donkey. Let's read together from Matthew chapter 21, verses 1 through 11. And I'll be reading from the New Living Translation. As Jesus and the disciples approached Jerusalem, they came to a town of Bethphage on the Mount of Olives. Jesus sent two of them on ahead. Go into the village over there, he said. As soon as you enter it, you will see a donkey tied there with its colt beside it. Untie them and bring them to me. If anyone asks you what you were doing, just say, The Lord needs them, and he will immediately let you take them. This took place to fulfill the prophecy that said, Tell the people of Jerusalem, Look, your king is coming to you. He is humble, riding on a donkey, riding on a donkey's colt. The two disciples did as Jesus commanded. They brought the donkey and the colt to him and threw their garments over the colt, and he sat on it. Most of the crowd spread their garments on the road ahead of him, and others cut branches from the trees and spread them on the road. Jesus was in the center of the procession, and the people all around him were shouting, Praise God for the Son of David! Blessings on the one who comes in the name of the Lord! Praise God in the highest heaven! The entire city of Jerusalem was in an uproar as he entered. Who is this? they asked. And the crowds replied, It's Jesus, the prophet from Nazareth in Galilee. This is God's word. You know, it's important for us as we read this text for us to see what's going on. So often we just assume about this text and we don't carefully read it. When we read Matthew's gospel, it's very clear that we are reading the fulfillment of Zechariah 9.9. Well, Matthew says as much. But when we read the parallel text in Luke 19, it's not quite so clear. And when we read Mark 11, the passage of Scripture from Zechariah is not there at all. And what we see is this progressive understanding of what this event meant in the life of Jesus. What we see in Matthew's text are three perspectives, or two perspectives anyway, but three perspectives. The first one we see is what Jesus sees. When we read this text, we can't help but sense that there was planning that went into this event, that Jesus had organized a couple of a donkey and a colt to be available to him with a password. Jesus had it all set up. Jesus knew what he was doing, and Jesus knew who he was. In John's Gospel, chapter 13, when Jesus washes the disciples' feet, it says in that text that he was fully aware of who he was and what God had called him to do. And of course, the most elevated gospel we have in terms of Jesus' identity is, in fact, John's Gospel. It's from John's Gospel that we get this John 14 that talks about when you see me, you see the Father. It's John's Gospel that says the Word was God and with God and the Word became flesh and dwelt among us. It's from John's Gospel in chapter 6 that, we, that Jesus himself reveals to the crowds, to his disciples, that the, no one has seen God except for the one who is with God. He's explained him to us. Of course, he's referring to himself. Jesus is the one who explains God to us. And so Jesus understands that he's a king. Jesus is proclaiming to the crowds, to the city of Jerusalem, I am the king. And we know from John chapter 12 that nobody understood this. We like to think sometimes, oh, they were all celebrating Jesus as king. But actually the text doesn't say that. 
In fact, in John chapter 12, verse 16, it reads, His disciples did not understand these things at first, but when Jesus was glorified, then they remembered that these things had been written of him and had been done to him. You see, they didn't get it in the moment. They got it after the fact. It's just one more case of hindsight being 2020. And we understand that all too well in our lives. So Jesus comes into the city. He's on a donkey. He's proclaiming to everyone there, I am your king. But what does it say? It says the whole city of Jerusalem was in an uproar. Now, it doesn't say they were crying out, Hosanna, blessed is the one who comes in the name. No, 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 no. That was the ones who were following Jesus from Galilee. No, the people from Jerusalem, they were saying, what's the meaning of this? In fact, in Luke's gospel, it's very clear. And Jesus responds, hey, if they don't cry out, the rocks themselves will cry out. The people of Jerusalem, they didn't see what Jesus saw. And I would dare say that neither did the people of Galilee. Let's look to the text. What did the crowd see? Well, namely, that he was a prophet. Because when the people of Jerusalem cry out, you know, in an uproar, you know, what is the meaning of this? They were offended by all of this celebration around this person on a donkey. And, and, and how did they answer? Well, they didn't answer, he's Jesus, the king. No, this is Jesus, the prophet from Galilee. That was their upper boundary of their estimation of who Jesus was. And of course, Jesus was a prophet. There's no question about that. He was a healer. He was a teacher. He was a prophet. But he was more than a prophet. I remember when I was a young uh, a teenager reading a book called More Than a Carpenter. <laughs> now as I read the Bible, I realize that people pushed him up even beyond a carpenter, but he was more than a prophet. But they couldn't see that. Not then. They would see it later. And I guess that's the point. They would see it later. Some would reject it. His disciples would accept it. But they would see it later, what Jesus was doing. The goal for us as disciples is to see what Jesus sees as it's happening. Not to have a huddle afterwards, to deconstruct everything and evaluate everything and then write our critique of what was good and what was bad. I mean, that's all good, and, and we have to do that as we're doing stuff. We need to evaluate it. But I dare say that the goal of the Christian following Jesus is to understand what Jesus is seeing at any given time in the moment. And so that leads us to the question as we read this narrative, as we experience this Palm Sunday, what do we see? We know what Jesus saw. Jesus sees, I'm the king. And we know what the crowd saw. The, the people from Jerusalem, they didn't see anything. They said that they saw, they saw a problem. Who is this? The people from Galilee, those who were following him, elevated to hear, not to hear. And that's what we have to deal with. Learning to see God in a whole new way to see God through Jesus, Jesus the King. It was Henry Blackaby who popularized most recently the idea of being spiritually sensitive to what God is doing in any given moment. We learn from Jesus that God is working all the time. You know, often what we used to do is pray and organize and plan, and then we used to build stuff, and then we'd pray desperately, God, bless our efforts, bless our efforts. And there's a time for that when we have a clear vision of what God wants us to do. But I think the biblical model most of the time is seeing what God is already doing and joining him there. What is God doing right now in our lives? I mean, let's face it, um, life's not normal right now. There's a lot of things going on that we would rather not be going on. 
and we feel isolated and we feel um, maybe a little antsy at this point in time and we just want to go and do stuff and for things to get normal again. And now we're being told that this could go on for a couple of months and then prolonged for longer than that. And we get a little panicky when we start thinking about this. But what I'm suggesting today on this Palm Sunday is that we take this story of Jesus as an example for us and to ask the question, Jesus, how do you see this? Jesus, what do you see? And as we look to Jesus and see God, ask the question, God, how do you want me to be in this moment? God, what are you doing that I can join you in? And there are ministries that we can join together in. And you know what? They're not going to be the same as the old things. I mean, you don't know how much I would love for us to be in our worship space, singing together and smiling and seeing each other's faces and just celebrating this prelude to Easter. And my heart breaks a little bit thinking about an Easter celebration where we're going to have to do this again. Because it's not the same. But what is God doing in this moment? Can we open our hearts? Can we open our spiritual eyes to see what God is doing and to join him there? On this Palm Sunday, let's not be like the residents of ancient Jerusalem and ask, who is this? totally oblivious to what God is doing. Let's not be like the crowds of ancient Galilee and proclaim this is the prophet Jesus, nor just see part of what God is doing a little bit, the part that we like and are comfortable with. No. We need to see like Jesus sees. We need to see what God is actually doing. To see Jesus the King. Jesus who will offer himself to his people and for his people. Jesus who will set us free from the ultimate enemies of our life and our soul. Jesus, the Messiah. Jesus, the King. And may seeing this reality today, in this moment of our lives, renew our minds, actually change the way we think, May this be a transforming truth for us in the days ahead. Jesus is king. What have we to fear? Let's pray together. Lord Jesus, we praise you. You are king. Lord Jesus, reign in us. Lord, you desire in me more than hype, more than shouts and songs. You desire in me a heart that trusts in you, a heart that bows down to you as king. Lord, give us spiritual eyes to see you for who you are. Lead us to a place where we confess, my Lord, my God, my Savior, my King. Hosanna, King Jesus. Maranatha. Come quickly, Lord. Amen. All right, we're back, and uh, glad you're here. We're going to um, we're going to close, but uh, again, I just want to thank Mel for helping us out over these past few weeks with our set list, and uh, and for all those who have pulled together to help um, with the technology. Special shout out to Travis, of course, who still <laughs> I still have his equipment on loan, and uh, really, without that, we would be. Uh, a far worse shape so thanks for to him for his generosity um, but again for all your generosity those of you who are supporting our church during this time and I know there's a lot on our minds for all of us we have loved ones we're concerned about and uh, and we we want to pray for and um, so what we do each week and we'll be doing this going forward as far as I can see anyhow um, is we're going to be meeting on zoom 
uh, software package. If you haven't installed it yet, I can't imagine anyone in the world not having installed Zoom yet. Um, most of us are working off of it and doing all kinds of things. On, maybe you're sick of Zoom. Well, this is a great way to redeem Zoom, okay? Because we're going to come together and we're going to encourage each other. We're not going to ask about deadlines or workloads or try to explain something to somebody that is really hard to explain without actually being there. Um, no, we're going to come together and we're going to see each other's faces. And you know what? That's a that's a blessing in itself, just to see each other, even if it's virtual, um, even if it's just a photo that's moving and it symbolizes a live person somewhere. It's a it's a, it's a blessing. So um, I'm going to put a link up in our private uh, uh, members group on Facebook. And uh, if you're not a member of that and, and you want to connect with our church, um, send in a, a request to join that and we'll we'll pop you right in and I'll be putting the link in there. Um, because of um, a recent phenomenon, called, I guess it's Zoom bombing, I guess it's called, where people dump in, jump into a chat without being invited and do all kinds of terrible things. Um, we're, we're putting a password now in our Zoom calls. And so I will be posting in that private group both the um, the link and the password. So uh, so look to that, and we will meet in about uh, uh, 5 after 11. We will meet at 5 after 11 in Zoom to pray for each other and encourage each other and just to, uh, just to, uh, to give the Lord's blessing on each other as we, uh, as we live through this crisis. So thank you for being here today. From my heart to yours, God bless you. God be with you. And I'll see, uh, for those of you who are uh, uh, going to join us in Zoom, I'll see you there. God bless.